What brand is overpriced, not worth the money? Share in the comments your story what brand is overrated for you and is not worth your money. Enjoy browsing. Story 1. Most designer purses, handbags. You can find better quality made purses without the brand inflation if you pay attention to materials and production practices. Drugstore makeup is sometimes just as a good or better thank overpriced brands of makeup. Juliet. Has a gun perfume really fooled a lot of people into thinking Cetalox is hard to make and somehow worth the high price point? Apple phones, Nike products. Story 2 Apple. I demoed the Vision Pro, and the attendant asked me if I'd ever used VR before. I said yes, and explained that I have a high-end VR setup at home. For reference, I have a Valve Index, which is a little bit outdated now, but still incredible. He said it would blow me away like nothing I had ever experienced. The display was really nice, better than my index. The controls were like a more refined version of the Oculus Quest's hand tracking, but the demo was not impressive at all. I swiped through a few photos and watched a video in 360. It's not even a 6 duff headset, meaning no tilting or moving up and down, at least not in the demo I used. It reminded me of demoing the Oculus Rift when it was new. Definitely didn't feel like something I would blow $4K over. Story 3. This is obviously a rhetorical question. All brands are overpriced. By definition, all investment that goes purely to promotional advertising and or sponsorship and not development, production, quality control, or distribution inherently means the product is overpriced and not worth the money. For all brands, it is just a matter of degree of how overpriced one is relative to another. Story 4. Apple. I goddamn hate Apple products. Buying the iPhone 13 was my biggest mistake. If I wanted a phone that can just do the basic stuff, then I would have bought an Android phone for less than $400. iPhones are like two, three times the price, and the only thing they do better is lasting longer, which makes no sense for phones. Since most tariffs for SIM cards go for two years, you could just change for another tariff with a new Android phone every two years. Android phones last very good for two years, and they got a hell of more useful functions and are cheaper. Also, Apple never made significant updates or changes since five years. Also, they were forced to make the iPhone 15 with a USB-C. They had planned to make it so that Apple's own USB-C cable would be faster to load than other USB-C cables. So people would have had to buy their cables, which would have been really pricey. Thank God Europe had said no to that. Story 5 Men's Designer Suits There is usually no connection between brand and price and quality of material, craftsmanship, and fit. You can get an $800 cheap suit in the same store you can get a $1.150 suit that is 100% high-end wool and looks like it was custom-made. Story 6. Pretty much any prestige brand is like this. They serve as status symbols and not functional products with a price tag in line with their utility. So Rolex, I'm sure many other watches, most luxury car brands like Ferrari, Porsche, Land Rover, etc., some tech companies like Beats by Dre, Apple, B, and O. Most high fashion is this way. Many shoe companies are this way. Basically, if something can be mass-produced at a reasonable price, there is going to be an expensive version of it so that rich people can feel good about themselves. Story 7. Lululemon. As someone with half a closet full, their quality has gone down so much, and even their original founder who sold the company has said he wishes he never did so because they're ruining the quality and what the brand once was. He said they are using cheap fabric and charging the same prices, and that will be the downfall of the company. It used to be exclusive and such good quality. People used to save their money to buy their leggings. Now the leggings are see-through and there are Amazon dupes that are cheaper and better quality. Story 8. Prismacolor Colored Pencils. The production moved to Mexico, and ever since the quality control went downhill, they are still highly blend layerable and pigmented. However, you have to apply a ton of pressure which causes the barrel of the pencils to snap in half due to the cores being off-center. Alternative is the legacy brand Sanford Charisma Color, which the manufacturing rights were listened to a Japanese pencil company who manufacturer them. Now, however, a set will run you $1.80, $1.150 plus import fees much cheaper than a set of Karen de Ach pencils, though. Story 9. Little Sleepies. Their quality is so bad, and people pay their crazy prices. And not only that, but they will pay $100s of dollars to resellers. I've even seen shit-stained sleepers and a blanket covered in rat pee sell for $100 plus. It's insane. Story 10 Chicago Cutlery. Since it moved production to China. My set from the 70s has never been sharpened, only honed. The wood handles are perfect as they have never been submerged. The crap sold now doesn't have the model number branded on the handle. If given that junk, it would get tossed in the dishwasher. Story 11. Any clothing where the material is neither luxurious or technical. Expensive suits are worth it. 
because the nice fabric can be upwards of $200 a yard. Complicated sportswear can also be expensive because of the R and D that went into the materials. But if the fabric isn't made of exotic or difficult to work with materials, like high quality leathers and wools, and it has been around for a few years so it isn't inflated by development costs, then you can find the same thing for probably a tenth the price if you know what to look for. Always spend your money or time if you are willing to learn and modifying for the perfect fit. Story 12. Amina Mwadi Heels. Don't last if you actually expect to wear them more than twice. Their shoes come damaged very often, too. Chanel handbags. Leather is not the same or worth the price. I am a longtime consumer of the brand, and their bags have gone downhill in the last five years. Same for their sunglasses. A pair of mine had the logo chip off on the second wear, and my boutique told me they couldn't fix them. Also, if they could fix them, then it would cost me $1.80. Their shoes still remain to be good quality, though. Story 13. Cleaning Zara is overpriced, the, the quality of clothing they are making. Unfinished hems. Sloppy surging. Most pieces are piling already before you even take it off the hanger to try on. Everyone is always raving about them, but whenever I go in the store to check the pieces, they all look horrible. Story 14. Coach. Bought a purse. Zipper broke. They gave me a replacement. Zipper broke again. They had stopped making them. BC design was flawed. Said they wouldn't honor lifetime warranty unless I had original receipt. I had original receipt. They offered me a coupon for another bag. Not even a coupon worth full value for what I paid for the original bag, but a lousy 30% off a new purse. I told them to suck it and complain to the FTC, but nothing came of it. Now I just tell everyone, don't buy from them. Story 15. Bought my first LV wallet 40 wires ago. Bought my first Rolexes 35 years ago. Bought my first Versace suede shoes 30 years ago. Many more after that. Hermes ties all. Boss suits. Gucci shoes. LV shoes. Prada jackets. All a waste of money in hindsight. Also modified my Subaru Impreza with HKS racing parts. And my Porsche modified. All a waste of money in hindsight. Better put in fund or buy some blue chip stocks for 2040 wires. Story 16. Unfortunately, with my experience, Burberry had some alarming quality to their shoes. While God they are comfortable, they're cheaply made. I bought a pair for about $800. They started lightly falling apart after a couple weeks of light use. I still like wearing them, though, and I'm wearing them as I type this. Another example, I would say, is Steve Madden. Shit quality across all products, especially their shoes. I always try to tell people to spend a little more on a better quality brand. Story 17 Pixels Phones. I paid $900 for mine. Immediately started having problems. I had the insurance in case the phone needed to be replaced. Well, I replaced mine three times. The last one I had the screen started flickering a lot, and it got so hot I was afraid it would explode. So even though I'm still paying off the stupid thing, I just went ahead and got a new Samsung. At least that's an annoyance out of my life. Story 18. NVIDIA Graphics Cards. Funding a war between two shithole countries that has zero chance of being won by the side the United States is sending money to. Getting a degree in political science. Getting a degree in women's studies. Yes, I know you asked for brands, but screw your rules, lol. Story 19. Okay, let me make a list of ones I have personal experience with. Doc Martens. Example of a product that used to be high quality then got into pop culture and the quality dropped in price raised. Rolex or other expensive watches. You can get better watches for less than $10,000. Gibson guitars, yeah, they are amazing instruments, but they are not base model $1,500 good. PRS makes base model guitars just as good and high quality as Gibson base models for $1,000. Saw stop. All you are paying for is the safety feature, which they have fought tooth and nail from anyone else from making something similar and otherwise that are just average. Uh, that's all I have, I think. Story 20. The whole concept of brand is mostly about the value being in the name, not the product. So if you are paying a lot because you want to wear something with a certain company's name on it, it is worth the money for you. Another value added by a brand is peace of mind. I will buy a brand name Small Electronic because I do not want to have to worry about it breaking as fast as a cheaper Chinese version on Amazon. The actual product itself might not be any better, but the peace of mind for me of perceived higher quality is worth the money. If you are speaking simply utility, unless a brand has a patented process that cannot be made by a non-brand company, they are mostly all not worth the money. Story 21 Apple. I'm actually shocked that it took me so long to scroll before I even saw it mentioned once. In my opinion, almost every product is overpriced for what they're trying to sell. 
especially since it breaks easily and isn't worth the money it takes to get them fixed. There's also just the fact that you can Apple only features on literally any other device at a much better price. They're honestly just a name now, although I can admit they have a nice interface. They also ruined Beats, so there's that. And I love Beats, but they suck now, and that's coming from someone who's bought multiple thinking I was the issue. When in reality, they have a short lifespan even if you are careful with them. One final thing is how limited they are. If you, for example, get a single Apple product, whether it be a laptop, iPhone, or even an iPad, if you have any other type of device, they're basically useless because there's no way to cross use, which is a smart marketing choice on their part, but it's just another downside because then you have to buy everything Apple so you can use the one device with others. Story 22. Timberland. Absolute dog shite. Claim to be waterproof. Both pairs I've bought have not been, despite a huge embossed stamp saying they are. And the soles on the Earth Keepers are lethal on wet pavements, so slippy they are genuinely unwearable. Unless you want to injure yourself. Story 23. Eolive ranges and any of the affordable luxury brands appliances. These things are basically $5.8K look and are very decently made. But if you have any problem, have non-existent customer service for issues. And if you need parts, it's coming back order from literally Australia. If you want a high-end range slash appliance, just get the Wolf slash Viking, etc. It's 25%, 35% more dollar 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 day one to purchase than something like a ILV but they will cup your balls while repairing it 10 years later versus endless nightmares, wait times, and potential cost rivaling what you should have just spent to begin with. This is advice for building a high-end kitchen, etc. Just spend the few extra dollar. For a low-cost kitchen renovation budget leaking into trying to get these, avoid if you can't afford the wolf slash Viking. Get a high-quality product and support in something less fancy-looking. Story 24 Apple you can get a good Android phone for half the price that is better in most ways. Android phones enable you to install apps from the internet with AAPK file. So if anything gets taken down from the app store, you can just get it online. Emulators are not allowed on iOS, while on Android, I can emulate literally any console from NES to Wii. iOS doesn't allow 18 plus stuff, so you get fucked over when you try using a lot of Discord servers. On iOS, you can't do those things without jailbreaking your device. While on Android, I can do all those things and more out of the box. And don't even get me started on Macs. You have to be genuinely brain dead to buy them instead of any Windows computer. Story 25 Off-White Hate the designs and quality is also shitty. My best friend is a big fan and I don't get it. There are plenty of good quality and luxury brands. He has kind of put it on BC. It is luxury. Why the hell on earth does people wear this crap? If you can afford Off-White, you can always buy some quality stuff. Story 26 Samsung Appliances don't get me wrong, Samsung makes a ton of great products, but their appliances are not one of them. LG has this same issue. They have both been making appliances that break way more often than they should for at least a decade now. Story 27. Nearly everything that advertises. Sure, there's a few good things that advertise, but actually good stuff doesn't need to. They make good products and people return or tell others about it. Shit products need advertising to convince people to buy it. Convince them it's premium. Convince them it's fashionable. They spend so much on advertising, people act like they can't also spend money on fake reviews or testimonials. If I see ads for something, I immediately distrust it until proven wrong. If I see a store that generally sells respectable stuff like REI, and they carry a brand I hadn't heard of, I'd probably give it a shot. Everyone wants to make money. How they go about getting those numbers up can tell you a lot about a product. Story 28. After I started spinning yarn and learning about different natural fibers, from muskox to silk to pearl to rabbit, it's absolutely insane at how much brands abuse the 19.2% silk aged in bullfrog piss or whatever. Clothing that has a percent of a natural fiber is nothing but bullshit. That percent is usually an embellishment of some sort and not part of the actual fabric. So you'll get a big nice coat, for example. It'll say 80% polyester, 10% nylon, 9% wool and 1% Angora. The coat is 100% polyester. It may have stripes in it that are nylon, and the wool and Angora are an embellishment, like the pom-poms or fringe or the fluff over the zippers. None of that shit matters. If the item isn't 60 to 70% of a fiber, it's not structurally made of that fiber. If I were to be looking for a wool coat, one, I probably wouldn't buy one. But anyways, true wool items that are made with any sort of quality material will usually list what type of wool they use. Rambouillet, Merino, Winsleydale, Coriadale, etc. This lets me know the coarseness, also the hardiness of the item. 
like merino and rambouillet, are on the softer side, usually used for skin contact items, whereas Icelandic and Navajo churro wool are hardier and meant for harsher climates and used in items that experience tough abrasion. A lot of brands abuse this and will put percent wool, but what they don't tell you is that wool is just mill ends from all sorts of breeds that are blended together. So the quality is actually shittier than you'd ever think by just reading percent wool. Same can be said for llama, alpaca, etc. But there are far fewer options to abuse in the camelid family, so the quality is a little more unblemished per se. Story 29. I'm not sure if it's any specific brand, but I feel like most of the fast food, semi-fast food that we've come to know has become seriously overpriced in relation to everything else. It seems as though the gap in fast food places compared to somewhat fast food places like Slim Chickens, etc., or even just legit sit-down restaurants has seriously closed up. It's ironic how it actually encourages me more to go to an actual business to either pick up or sit down and eat, because more than likely it would cost the same or more to get a similar amount of food delivered to me from a fast food place. Or I just straight up decide... I'm depressed and I want to cope by eating some good food. But the economics of it all is so convincing that I still will go out of my way to just cook at home. It's just all really surprising when you actually start doing the math on what you're eating and paying for. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.